Hi, so we know that uh, i is the square root of negative 1. So how can we calculate i to the power i, alright? So this is an interesting problem and I'm going to solve it in two ways. So the first and probably the simplest is to write the bottom i here in uh, exponential form. Of course we have three ways of writing complex numbers. We can write them in Cartesian form using x and y. We can write them in polar form using the modulus and argument. And we can also write them in exponential form. So let me just go ahead and do that. So i is the same as, um, of course, a complex number z in exponential form is written as r exponent i theta, where r is the modulus and theta is the argument of this complex number. So that's what I'm going to do here. So uh, for this i here as a complex number, the modulus is 1. And then the argument is 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. Of course, uh, if I just plot this, this is my imaginary axis. This is my real axis. Um, so i is just one unit, which is just somewhere here on the imaginary. So that's going to be my complex number. And the argument is just that, pi over 2. So that's our representation of i. So i is um, exponent i times pi over 2. And so just take this off. So I'm going to write the bottom i in this form here. So let's go ahead and do that. So i to the power i is going to be exponent i times pi over 2. And then I'll leave this power of i as it is. So that's i. So I'll have e to the power. So I'll have, of course, from the laws of indices, I'll multiply the powers. So I have i squared times pi over 2. And that's e to the power negative pi over 2. Because we know that i squared is negative 1. That's by definition from here. So this is one way of doing it. But um, this method here doesn't give you all the solutions of i to the power i. So let me show you the second way, which probably gives us all the uh, uh, values of i to the power i. Let me just do that here. So the second way, i to the power i. Now, if you have something like, um, let's say, x, you can write that as exponent uh, times the natural log of x because the exponent happens to be the antilog of the natural logarithm. So that, that's, that's okay. So I'm going to write one of the i's, the bottom i here. Uh, yeah, that's good. So I'm going to write the bottom i here as, as this. So I'll just say i to the power i equals. So for this i here, I'm going to write it as exponent times the log of i, okay, and then I'll maintain this power, right, I'll maintain that as i, so still I multiply the powers, so I'll have exponent times i, natural log of i, so uh, the last thing we want to do is to find this here, the natural log of i, and if we can do that and replace back that here, we'll be done, so let's see how we do that. Now, the natural log of i, so um, I'm going to leave uh, a link to a video where I show you how to calculate the logarithms of a complex number. I'll also leave a card somewhere up here for you to check that out. But uh, in that video, I actually derive that if you have a complex number, say x plus i, y, then the log of that complex number, the natural log, is given by, uh, is given by the natural log of the modulus plus i, uh, times theta, but to be more general, I add 2 pi n because theta is the principal argument, but of course you can get more arguments by rotating uh, 360 degrees. So that's the general formula for finding the log of a complex number. Uh, so from here, the natural log of i, of course the modulus of i is just 1, so we have the natural log of 1 plus i, vertexing that the principal argument of i is 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians, plus 2 pi n, of course, for more uh, arguments. So let's substitute that back here. So we have i to the power i equals this here, e to the power i times, uh, 
of course this is going to be a zero so i just have this i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi that's a pi n okay and then we've got this i multiplying this so we'll have e to the power i squared uh, in 2 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n which we know i squared by definition is negative 1 so we have e to the power negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi n and that's the so of course i forgot to mention here in this formula n equals 0 that's when n is equal to 0 we just have the principal argument and then we have 1 2 3 and so on and the same applies here so to get more solutions, you just plug in another value of n and another value and another value. And that's how we get all the solutions here. So n is 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So this is the general solution for i to the power i. And something interesting about this is that if we have a complex number to power a complex number, what we get is actually a real number because we don't actually have i anywhere here. So... It's a very interesting result that if you have a complex number uh, to the power another complex number, what you get is a real number. It's a pretty interesting result. So thanks for watching this video. If you find it helpful, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.